everybody, welcome back to Actual Investing. Today I want to talk about two semiconductor stocks that I think are being overlooked by the market. These are both small cap stocks, and they're both leaders in a particular niche of semiconductors, and I think they could really do well in the long term. So without further ado, let's just dive right in and talk about the first one on my list, which is Photronics, ticker PLAB. Photronics is a pretty small company with less than a $2 billion market cap, but they're a leader in a very specific part of the semiconductor manufacturing process known as Photomask. So essentially, the way I thought of it is that Photomask is kind of like a really, really advanced shadow puppet. Have you ever held your hand up in front of a light or a projector and made the little dog face with your hand and it projects and it looks like there's a dog on the wall or something? Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll put a picture in the video just in case I'm making no sense at all. But essentially, Photomask is kind of like that. It's essentially like a stencil for semiconductors. So a light source will shine through a lens onto this Photomask stencil through another lens and onto the actual semiconductor wafer. And this enables a perfectly precise pattern for all semiconductors to ensure quality and accuracy. From Wikipedia, a photomask is an opaque plate with transparent areas that allow light to shine through in a defined pattern. And essentially, it can be used to quote-unquote print a design onto a silicon wafer. So as you can imagine, this has a lot of use cases and can be used broadly across the semiconductor industry. In fact, Applied Materials, ticker AMAT, which has pretty much the broadest portfolio of semiconductor equipment out there, has said that Photomask is an expanding segment. They say that there's a growing demand for Photomasks for volume production of mobile, automotive, and Internet of Things applications. So it sounds like as these disruptive technologies such as IoT and electric and autonomous vehicles continue to grow, the need for Photomask is only going to grow more and more. And the fact that a giant like Applied Materials is getting into the game, I think is quite bullish for the photomask industry. And Applied Materials will actually have to play catch up because according to research that I found, Photronics is the leader in photomask and they themselves call themselves the leader. So I'm going to trust that because I can't find any specific research on the overall market share. So if anyone has specific research and would like to share it, definitely let me know. So the reason that I think Photronics may be being overlooked by the market is that they are seeing some slowing and stalled revenue growth currently. I expect this to turn around, but let's look at what's going on. So essentially, Photronics has two segments, ICs and FPDs, and both of them were down year over year. So let's talk about what each of these segments are, starting with FPDs. An FPD is a flat panel display. Essentially, it's an electronic viewing technology that lets people see content on their electronic devices, such as a computer, a smartphone, or a smartwatch. So I think it's easy to see why that segment was down 10% year over year. Essentially, the economy still has not recovered in the U.S. and honestly throughout most of the world. The U.S. is still being plagued by high interest rates, which means consumers don't have as much discretionary money in their wallets and they're not going to be going out and buying Apple Watches and new smartphones as frequently as they would have when rates were lower. However, this is quite a cyclical industry and I believe that as the economy recovers, this FPD segment will recover as well. This FPD segment is significantly smaller than their IC segment, so let's talk about what ICs are. An IC is an integrated circuit, essentially it's just a type of semiconductor chip. The integrated circuits are compact electronic chips made of interconnected components, all working together to make our world go around. They even go as far as to say without ICs, most technologies would not be possible, and we as a technology-dependent society would be helpless. I mean, it's quite true, they do have lots of different applications, ANSYS lists some here, children's toys, cars, computers, phones, subway trains, planes, video games, even toothbrushes. So essentially, an integrated circuit is any kind of specialized small semiconductor chip. And Photronics Photomass technology is used for lots of different ICs in lots of broad applications. We can see that even though this segment was down year over year, they saw really good growth, 32% in their high-end ICs. But it was down quarter over quarter, 5%, which they blame on lower US demand, which as I said, kind of makes sense due to the weakening economy that we're seeing currently. But year over year, it's up on strong demand from Asia foundries. So the nice thing about Photronics is that they are diversified over a broad range of geographies. So even though Photronics revenue is down year over year, if we zoom out, they do have a really strong track record of revenue growth previously, but not just revenue growth, also net income growth. And even though their revenues are down year over year, Photronics is a stronger company than they were a year ago. What do I mean by that? Well, even though the revenues are down year over year, they are still free cash flow positive and are making profits. So here's their balance sheet for every six months, April 2023, October 2023, and April 2024. We can see that their net cash position has been growing steadily and significantly every six months. They currently have half a billion dollars in cash. And when we look at their balance sheet, we can see that they only have 235 million of debt. So they could, if they wanted to, pay off all their debt and still have cash left over. If you know me, you know I like a strong balance sheet like that. 
So to summarize, Photronics is a leader in a specific niche of semiconductor production called Photomask. It's a segment that I believe will continue to grow as echoed by companies like Applied Materials seeing increased demand. And even though the revenues are down year over year, their cash balance is up, they have a very strong balance sheet, and I believe the market is discounting them, especially when you look at their PE ratio of just 12. So Photronics to me is a very interesting small cap stock and I'll be keeping my eye on it for sure. By the way, if you like the video so far, please be sure to hit the like button. That really helps me out because I think it kind of prompts the YouTube algorithm to show this video to more people. So if you do like it, definitely hit that like button. And honestly, if you dislike it, hit the dislike button and please leave me a constructive comment below. I'm still new at this whole YouTube thing and I really want to deliver content that's easy to digest. So if you have any suggestions for me, seriously, please leave them below. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so let's go on to the second semiconductor stock that I think is being overlooked by the market. And that is Allegro Microsystems, ticker ALGM. I've talked about Allegro Microsystems on my channel before, but it's been a while, so I think they're worth checking back in on. This is a slightly larger company at a $6 billion market cap, but still definitely in that small to mid cap range. Like Photronics, Allegro Microsystems is seeing revenue growth down year over year, but if we zoom out, they do still have that really strong track record of revenue growth. So let's talk about what they do and why I think they might be overlooked by the market. Allegro makes very specialized ICs or semiconductor chips, primarily for the automotive market. If we look at their sales by market, we can see that automotive makes up 73% of sales. Their next biggest segment is industrial automation at 21%. And then they have this other segment, which is only 6%, but I believe it's very interesting. We'll talk about it in just a little bit. So we know that Allegro serves the automotive market primarily, but what exactly do they sell? So they have two main divisions, magnetic sensor chips and power chips. Magnetic sensors are their largest segment at a 62% share, power chips at a 38% share. They claim to be number one in the market for magnetic sensor ICs. So this is something that I think Photronics and Allegro have in common. They found a specific niche of the semiconductor market, and they're really specialized in this market. Just as a general rule, I think that's a really good thing to do when looking for small cap stocks. Large cap companies tend to be a jack of all trades where they do a little bit of everything. So if you want to find a small cap stock that's going to be successful, I recommend looking for something that is highly specialized on one small niche that the bigger companies just aren't as focused on. That way, these smaller companies can kind of get into that small market share and really take over. And I think that's what both Photronics and Allegro Microsystems are doing. Magnetic sensor ICs, or essentially magnetic sensor chips, are used primarily in electric vehicles to improve the range and also help out with the speed of their charging. They're also used to improve efficiency in clean energy systems, such as solar panel projects. So these magnetic sensor chips play on a lot of themes that I want exposure to. I do believe that electric vehicles and clean energy will continue to grow in demand going forward. Their power ICs, or power Power chips essentially do something similar. They're small, quiet chips that help with energy efficiency for in-cabin use in vehicles. They're used for things like motors and fans to improve power efficiency. So we see a theme across all of the chips that Allegro Microsystems produces of energy efficiency. So as electricity demand continues to rise and price goes up, I think Allegro will see continued demand for their products that help improve efficiency and ultimately lower costs for the end user. Allegro's investor deck talks about three growth drivers for the company. So as cars continue to become electric, as clean energy expands, and as the world continues to automate, Allegro Microsystems should see increased demand for their products because like I said, their primary market is automotive, thus that electrifying cars. They have chips that improve the efficiency of clean energy products, thus the clean energy. And their second segment at that 21% market share is industrial automation. So they make chips that help with industrial robotics. So a lot of growth drivers for Allegro. But what I think is interesting is that other segment at 6%. They don't really talk much about that, so I had to dig into it a little bit. This is a website that either estimates or actually lists Allegro Microsystems customers. So we can see the typical EV names. So Air Test Systems makes test systems for EV chips. Aptiv makes vehicle components. But then what's interesting is I'm starting to see some technology companies like Cisco, Dell, HP, Juniper Networks, NetApp, Peer Storage. What's not super well known is that Allegro Microsystems actually makes solutions for data centers as well. And that's why you see some of these data center names on this list of customers. So here's a graph from Allegro Microsystems. They talk about the different products that they make for data centers, including DC regulators, power supply components, components, fan control, and more. Here's an article from two years ago where they talk about their expansion into gate drivers for data center cooling systems, which I think is going to be a big market for data centers. I talked about this in a previous video, but data centers have a lot of electrical components that are all working together that produce a lot of heat. So cooling them is going to be very important. So Allegro Microsystems offers a chip that helps with that. They also offer sensors for high performance computing. So 
We talked about those magnetic sensors that are used in EVs. Well, they're also used in data centers as well. So now that's four different applications for Allegro Microsystems products. We have electric vehicles and traditional vehicles to a lesser extent, clean energy, industrial robotics, and data centers, four high growth themes, and Allegro Microsystems has their hand in all four of those themes. I think that's really interesting. So even when one segment isn't doing well, the other segments should be able to continue to drive growth. So even though Allegro Microsystems revenue was down 10.7% year over year, I think that this is gonna bounce back and I think they'll see some strong recovery as we start to see tailwinds in some of those markets that have been kind of beaten down, like the automotive market. When we look at estimates from Allegro on their future growth, we can see that even though they're expecting 3% market growth from the automotive segment, Allegro expects to grow above the market by 7 to 10%. So they're expecting 10 to 13% growth in their automotive market. Same thing with industrial. Industrial is looking like a 6% growth over the next five years, but Allegro is looking at 11 to 16% growth. So I think that speaks to Allegro's confidence that they do have a superior product and that they can grow faster than the market. And like I said, if we zoom out, we can see that they have had a history of growth up until recently when the economy started to downturn. Like I said, the semiconductor industry is cyclical and I expect that this will rebound. So finally, let's look at these two semiconductor stocks on my high quality company spreadsheet and analyze 10 different factors about the company. So let's start with Photronics. Like I said, Photronics has a very low PE ratio, and they also have a very low price to annualized sales of just 1.7 times. This is quite low for a semiconductor company and much lower than the average company on my list, which has a price to annualized sales of maybe seven, but it really depends on the industry. Some industries get better valuations, such as the software industry, and some get lower valuations. So it really all depends. So that's why I like to look at these 10 different factors as opposed to just honing in on one thing like PE or price to sales. Like I said, they have a really strong balance sheet, very low debt to equity. Unlike other semiconductor companies, Photronics is not spending too much on R&D or SG&A, which is really nice. And that's what's caused them to have those really strong free cash flows. Even though their gross margins are slightly on the lower end at 37%, I think that's still passable. Looking at Allegro Microsystems, they have a bit higher PE ratio and price to sales with a 40 times PE and almost six times price to analyze sales. However, that does come with higher gross margins of 55%. They are a fabless semiconductor company. So that means that they don't actually manufacture the semiconductors. They outsource that. They just design them. What I like about both of these companies is, is that they are internationally diversified. Both companies have over 80% of the revenues coming from outside the US, which I think is going to help them to be resilient in the long term. So to summarize, Photronics specializes in photomass technologies. They appear to be the leader. They have a very strong balance sheet and should return to growth. And with a low price to annualized sales and low PE ratio, I think they present a relatively low risk to reward ratio. Allegro Microsystems, bit larger company, bit higher valuation, but they have so many applications and so many exciting tech themes that I think as time goes on and we look forward, they should see a resurgence of growth. And we know that they can be profitable with their strong 55% gross margins. So for me, I like both of these stocks and I'll be keeping them on my watch list. I'm potentially looking to enter one or both of them in the near future. I do offer a YouTube membership. So for $1.99 a month, you can see my trades in real time. I just post them on YouTube for my members. So if you want to see what trades I'm making, as in what stocks I'm buying as they happen, Definitely consider supporting the channel with that membership and you can see if I end up buying either of these two stocks. But either way, thank you just for watching the video. I really appreciate your support. If you're new here, please subscribe. I make stock deep dives and stock analysis videos. So if that's your cup of tea, definitely hit that subscribe button. And if there's any stock that you want me to cover in the future, please leave it in the comments. I love taking viewer suggestions and I've done quite a few in the past. Thanks again so much for watching the video and I hope you all have an amazing day.